What's up everyone, I'm Niceish and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. Ever wonder how a Rustrician wires up their own base? Well, today I'm going to show you how I wire up one of my favorite bases from start to finish. <laughs> nah, nah, it'll be, can you imagine? It'll be, it'll be better than this. We are back. Uh, we're going to do this in parts because it's easier to kind of break the different electrical systems that I use up into just different, you know, sections. Um, the twig you see on the base, I always do this when I'm doing this on a, on a live server because uh, it gives me quick access to the roof um, to, you know, kind of fly up and down and not have to use, uh, you know, um, ladder hatches and so forth. It's just faster and a little safer. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start with power because that makes sense. Um, we're going to go, I'm going to do the whole thing without using any admin mods, no, no, no clip, none of that. Just so you can see, uh, you know, how you would do this in on an actual server. So uh, we'll do a little base uh, tour afterwards. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the TC room and that is where I place my electrical room because it's the core of the base and you want uh, this stuff as safe as possible. Uh, so I'm gonna start with 10 solar panels. That's what I'd like to put up. And with the 10 solar panels, of course, I'm going to need uh, nine root combiners to connect them together. If you're not sure why I'm doing that, check out this video in the link above, I talk about that. Uh, but I'm gonna place these nine root combiners up here of which we're gonna place, we're gonna connect all the uh, solar panels to here in a moment. So let me just put all nine of these in a row. I usually put these back here because once they're hooked up, I don't have to mess with them again. So now we're gonna go up to the roof and we're gonna hook up our um, 10 solar panels and we're gonna run each of those solar panels down to that uh, one of those one of those root combiner inputs. Um, this is why you can see I use the twig because it's a lot easier to just fly up the side of the base here uh, than it is to try and run through all this other stuff. So, you know, when you're using solar panels, again, same video I linked before, uh, it talks about why we point them either north or south. Um, I know that I am just south of the center of this map. You can determine that by even just using the A0 to the you know bottom of the map and say, well, what's the center one? I'm below that here. So I'm gonna point mine north um, and I'm gonna put 10 of these up here. It doesn't really matter how I put them in. I usually just put them in sort of a, you know, an array, but you wanna point them due north for their maximum efficiency. Uh, let's see, here we go. So, and then, um, you know, you can add more later if you want. Um, for what I'm gonna do here, 10 solar panels is plenty. Um, it's actually probably even a tiny bit overkill, um, but I like to have 10 because I like my secondary battery to charge faster, uh, which I'll explain, you know, once we get to that point. But we're gonna put our 10 solar panels up here just like this. We got one left. We'll throw this guy right here. So if I look due east, that'll set him. There we go. All right, so we got our 10 solar panels. And so the other thing you wanna do is you don't wanna run the solar panels, uh, you know, the wires straight to that room because a lot of people use the TC room as a as an electrical um, spot. So you're gonna wanna go down sort of just to the, I like to go in the middle so it's not clear. So this is, you know, where's the front door? The front door is over here. So this is the front door down there. There's the twig, which makes the TC room this square right here. So I'm gonna just come down this center area on this side. Um, so it's kind of ambiguous, but not entirely unbelievable. So, and I always use black line. I don't like to give anybody hints um, from the outside. So what I do is I place it not on here, but just here, like so. And then I'm going to just go back down and I'm going to connect this to one of those inputs. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, here we go, let's get down here. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of climbing involved, but hey, that's okay. So I'm gonna connect this to one of them and that spot that I ran it down to was this right here. And so you can see if I, you know, this is never perfect. You gotta just do the best you can, but you can see where the, the wire will actually snap into that corner. So I'm gonna snap that wire into that corner. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna connect it to just this first one right there. And there we go, we have one hooked up. And so now I'm just gonna do that nine more times, um, exactly how I did that. And we will be good. Okay, 
So we've hooked up the 10 solar panels, each one to one of these um, inputs on these first five root combiners. And now the last step we have to um, complete at least the root power source is we need to connect the, um, combine all these into one single output. And so the way we do that is you just run from the uh, output of any of them and you run that into the input of any empty input um, going this on any other root combiner. Now, you know, it doesn't really matter which one you use. I tend to do this sort of, uh, you know, really careful wiring so that I keep track of what I'm doing. It just makes it a lot easier to um, look at, I guess, but also just easier in case you need to fix something later. So you just start hooking these up over to the available ports here. And once you run out of um, the original ones, you'll start hooking up the the blue synected ones to the next one. So basically you wanna just keep hooking everything up until you hit, get to a point where uh, you no longer have any um, unused outputs and you have a single single output that represents all of your, uh, let's do, Let's do this one first. Um, so then this is the last one here that needs to go to here. And then this one here we'll put into this one. And there you go. We now have our uh, combined power out. This represents all 10 solar panels uh, trunked into one output. So as the as the sun continues to rise, that number will will rise um, up to a, a max of 200 during the peak of a day. Um, so remember, solar panels can range from zero to 20. So um, that is the root power. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is hook up batteries. All right, so now we've got our solar panels up on the roof. Uh, we've gotten rid of the twig and we can start by installing the batteries and the battery circuit. Um, so uh, I'm gonna install two batteries, uh, but in a battery backup using the uh, battery backup circuit. If you're unsure of how to build that, you'd like to, you can use the link above to my video on that. So we're gonna have two batteries. Uh, this one in here is gonna be the secondary battery and downstairs is gonna be the primary battery. Um, the reason I split them up like this is because uh, the way this circuit works is that it A, gives you eight hours of battery backup um, should your solar panels be uh, destroyed, minimum eight hours. And then it also functions as a redundant battery system where if someone raids through this wall and destroys this battery, that battery will take over. And if that battery is destroyed, this battery will take over. So it's a great thing to have um, if that's something you enjoy. So I'm going to place this battery in here by rotating it so I see the little handle. Um, I'm not ducking up here so that I can get this little part right there. There you go. And then you can access the um, in the power in and power out just from underneath. This is why I don't put boxes on these shelves initially because I need to do this. So now we're gonna go down here and we're gonna install the primary battery, battery number one. Um, there is a distinction on how they're hooked up. So you gotta know which one you're gonna hook up as the primary. I use this one down here cause it's more armored. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna rotate this forward and then same thing. I'm not gonna uh, duck until it clips in. And if it does that, it means you're just a little too far over. Let's see, there we go. That should do it, there we go. And again, once again, you can access these down here. So uh, I'm going to hook up this um, this uh, double battery backup and I'm gonna start this right here. This is where I usually start my, my other things. I like to have the door with me so that I can make sure that the door still places uh, when I hook things this close to it. So it shouldn't be a problem, but you always wanna you know, check. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and set all the switches up and then I will connect them all together. So we're gonna put a blocker next to that. This one here is gonna be the charging uh, branch for the two batteries. And then of course we need our, you can use an OR switch or an XOR switch. I use the XOR switch now often because for this particular circuit, it doesn't matter which one you use and it uh, doesn't use voltage. So that's convenient for saving volts for other stuff. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is hook up all the uh, just little components here. Um, again, if you wanna know why I'm doing this, just watch the uh, video I made on this. Um, okay, so we'll hook that to there. The um, this These two here are gonna be the two charging outputs for the battery. This is going to be the um, input from our actual power. So I'll take our combined out, which is now at 200, so it must be 
middle of the day out there. So we're gonna run that right behind here and we'll run it to there. Okay, so that's our power. Now, so the branch out's gonna be the primary battery. So I'm gonna just do that like I did in the video. We'll make that green. Well, yeah, I'll make it green. I often make these black uh normally because i don't want to give raiders like clues if they're savvy i don't know you never know what they know um so i'm just gonna run this up along the ceiling like so well that did work you can right click if it doesn't set right and you notice that you can right click and you can you can remove it from the run so we'll run that there that's fine Again, I'd probably do this in black normally, but this will actually follow the other video, so that's probably probably helpful. Uh, so I'm going to, then you can clip it right into here, drop it down a little bit, and jumper it over to the input. There you go. Now the output of this uh, is going to be the, um, it's gonna run, we're gonna just turn this right back around, and we're gonna take the output, and we're gonna bring that back over to where we just were. So we'll run it along the exact same, uh, path so you can see you know a lot of this is going to depend on how you like to wire um, i am i like things to be run as you know nicely as possible i think that looks looks good um, so this is going to run um, back to the the first um, branch here the one that's connected to this this uh, blocker so we're going to just run this down place this into here um, uh, this is going to be set to 98, I believe, because what you want is one volt coming out of here. There we go, because we need this blocker to be blocked normally. This is how the battery backup and redundant battery um, works. Uh, okay, so then the the these two here are going to be our charging lines. So we've got one charging line going to that battery, our primary. So now we can go ahead and set up our second battery. I'll do that in yellow like the other video. And that's gonna be going upstairs. So we're actually just gonna, the best thing to do here would be to, you know, run this over here and just sort of pop it upstairs. So I'm gonna go upstairs. This is gonna run to the input of our, of our battery upstairs. It's a bit of a schlog. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so I'm gonna run this here. And what I'll, what I'll sometimes do is like, I'll put it right in here is good. Uh, because, you know, that's gonna be blocked by boxes and stuff. Um, it doesn't really matter, Raiders can't destroy wires, but, you know, I mean, you work hard to make it look nice, so. And I'm gonna run it into there, and then I'm going to connect it right here. And so then I'll connect this power output, and I'll run this the same way. I'm just gonna reverse it and go back down to where we just were, and I'll put it right there. And then I will connect it right here next to this one, like so. And then we're gonna run downstairs and connect this uh, to the, actually to the blocker input. And that's because this particular battery um, is the secondary battery, which means it only starts to take over if the blocker is released, uh, either by destroyed or a dead battery. So I'm gonna run that, I'll just run it over to here, that's fine. And we'll run this into the blocker. And then that actually is both of the batteries. So now we have our batteries hooked up. Um, we have to, so these are charging, right? So so the input of this is currently not set to something you would want because the, the primary battery needs to have at least, a large battery needs 125 volts if it's fully loaded to not die. So this first one I'm gonna set, again, watch the other video if you wanna know more about this, but I'm gonna set it to like, I don't know, 150 is fine. And that'll leave, you know, around 4950 for the other battery, which isn't, it, it's not in service and has no active usage, so it's just gonna trickle charge until it's full, and then it's good forever after that. So um, this works out fine. If you want to make sure that the other battery never dies, if that battery is, is, is destroyed, then you would wanna make sure that they're each receiving at least 125, um, but that often doesn't really matter. So if you added solar panels enough that you could have 150 and 150, then you could keep them both as primaries, but. In this build, it's, I don't think it's really necessary. So the last thing we're gonna do is I'm going to connect the um, batteries to our, our XOR switch here. And that is the, that XOR switch represents the power source for the base. So I'm going to just run these into here. And then the same thing with this uh, blocker, the yellow line, if you will. Uh, we're gonna run that over into the, 
into the um, XOR switch as well. We'll just follow the same path. And so there we go. So now we've hooked both these in. And now what we have actually is a fully functioning base lockdown, or I'm sorry, excuse me, a battery backup. And we have a uh, output for our base that's right there. So we have 98 volts. You'll notice that I, because I use the XOR switch, I set this to 98. It's giving me the full 98 coming out, which is you know convenient. So um, this circuit doesn't matter if it's OR or XOR. So that actually is it. Our batteries are hooked up. Um, we now are ready to distribute power from this XOR switch. Um, these batteries will be charging during the day um, and slowly, eventually they will both reach 24,000 rust watt minutes and we're good to go. So that is that, part three. Okay, so we've got our solar panels, we've got our batteries, and I think the next step is gonna be lights. What's the base without lights? So we're going to just head back to our, uh, you know, electrical room in the TC down here in the bunker. And we're gonna start from there. So um, this is the part where I start branching off power from the uh, main power out, which is this XOR switch right here. Uh, so if you're not fully sure why this makes sense or how to do this, I've got a video, how to wire like a pro, where I talk about uh, branching off power and so forth, I suggest you watch that. Uh, the link will be in the upper right hand corner. So I'm gonna take a branch and set it right here. And this is going to be the uh, first branch in a series that um, partitions off the power of our base. So I'm gonna run the XOR switch out to this branch. And so every time I wanna do something, you know, this is gonna be how much power I have left over. And this is gonna be how much power I'm partitioning off to some thing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and set a switch down here. This is gonna be the switch for the uh, lights. I'm gonna place that right there. And um, I'm gonna run that branch the branch out of this, I guess we'll do this in, yeah, I'll do it in black. Um, the branch out of this is gonna run to that switch and that is going to be the power for our, um, for our lights. So I'm gonna run this through here. There we go. And then this is gonna run to our lights. So next thing we're gonna do here before we adjust the branch to the right amount of volts for these lights, I'm just gonna place them. So I'm gonna place one light right uh, here. I'm going to place, uh, the rest are gonna be upstairs and in the heli base. So we're gonna place two lights up here in the uh, entrance, in the foyer or whatever. And put one there. We're gonna place one light in the, I like to have a light in the entrance here when I first come in the base, right there. And then I'm going to place the last two lights are gonna go in the heli base up here. So we'll just jump on up here if I can get up here. There we go. And we're gonna place a light in this entrance coming in. And I'm gonna place a light at this entrance or exit coming in or out depending. There we go. Okay, so we've got all our lights placed and we're going to go ahead and wire them up. And so the way that I suggest that you do lights, this is how I do it, is I always wire them from the core. They're just lights, it doesn't really matter, but as people are raiding your base, they're just always destroying lights. And so what I like to do is wire them from the closest point of the TC room and then radiating out. So we'll just do this in black. So I'm gonna run from this switch out here. I'm gonna run a line up to here through this. I'll put it here. And then this is where I start wiring them to the light. So I'm gonna run it over here. There's the power in. And so the next one is really just directly above it. And so I'm going to just run that back this direction and I'll probably just run it into this corner and then go upstairs and I'll wire in that light right there. And so I'll just jump on the bed here. I'll put this up into this corner somewhere, run this over to here and to this light. And then I'll daisy chain this light this is again, I talk about daisy chaining in one of my videos. This is an example of daisy chaining is fine because who cares, they're lights. So we're gonna set it to that one. This light will then, you know, I actually, you, you, know, you might think go to this next one, but I won't. This one I'm gonna take all the way to the roof and then run the roof ones down because often people raid through there and they bust that light out um, and it, it ends up um, destroying the lights in the heli base prematurely. So I'm just gonna place that there and then I'm going to run upstairs real quick. You could obviously just do this next one if you wanted to, um, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just like to do it this way. 
if I can ever get up this thing. There we go. Um, and so, you know, it's somewhere around here. And so this is all honeycomb in there, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to run this to here and then I'll pop it up to the ceiling this way. Uh, it doesn't matter which one of these that you do first because um, they are, oops, went the wrong way. They are uh, in the same room. So I'll go ahead and place this one here and then we'll do the pass through and we'll take that just over to this line is fine and over to here. And so then this light here, I will go ahead and take this one and I'm gonna run this one back down uh, to the light in that front door because most raiders door raid. And so that light is very, very, very probably gonna get ruined so many times. And so I'm on that line right there, so that's perfect. I'll just run that to there. And then there we go. So we've got our, go outside and make a line check, make sure it's not sticking, oh, we're good. So we've got all our lights hooked up. We've got six lights in the base. Each light requires two volts. We have one smart switch attached to them. And so we're going to need uh, six plus one, seven volts. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to my branch. I'm gonna set this to seven. And then if I flip this switch, there we go. We got lights. Okay, so that is lights. Uh, next step, turrets. Okay, so for turrets, I'm gonna set up four turrets outside. Um, we might potentially do a fifth one inside, but at least four on the outside um, is usually my go-to. So I've got these four stands uh, built into this base and I'm gonna place the turrets somewhat back a bit um, for the door thing I'm gonna do later, the auto doors. Um, so we're gonna place our four turrets real quick. Uh, you know, turrets are great. Um, honestly, if you know what you're doing, you can drain turrets, right? So you can think of turrets as a, uh, you know, sort of a deterrent, really, right? Um, it's going to deter players with less gear and whatever. But um, if someone's determined, really, I mean, you know, you're just going to, the goal is to cost them time and effort. So I'm going to put this other one a little more forward because it's out front, which, you know, isn't as effective because of this, but it's better than nothing. So we got our four turrets outside and I'm going to wire them up. So, um, you know, as I discussed in my wire like a pro video, I'm just going to be, you know, using that language. I'm gonna be extending the, uh, the trunk of the tree. If you've seen that video, uh, but I'm going to put a branch switch right here and I'm going to daisy chain. This is the output. So this 90 here is what we have left in our, our battery system here. So I'm going to run that. Uh, let's go ahead and just do that in red, actually. So I'm going to run that. I'm going to daisy chain that one off the first. This is just me continuing on. And so now I have this new branch for what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a smart switch down here next to this other one. Um, and then like that. And then this. So because there's four turrets, I'm going to use a splitter and a branch to get four outputs out of one switch. Um, I'm going to put the, the uh, splitter over here because they're gigantic. And I'm gonna go ahead and just place this, in fact, I'll just place this um, maybe right here next to it. See how far over I can get. There we go. I'll place this one next to it. These will be our outputs for our turrets. Um, and so this here is gonna run to the switch. So I'm gonna run this branch out to the switch down here. Uh, normally what I do is I always have just sort of this running cable run. I like to run them together if possible. It still gets a little messy no matter what you do, but you know, you can try. So I'm gonna run from the output of that switch, I'm gonna run that back up here and all the way across here and all the way across to there. Oh, I'm sorry, no, not there, my bad. Uh, what I meant to do was run this from the switch out. Uh, I got ahead of myself there and I'm gonna run that around here, like I said. And I'm gonna run that to the branch is what I meant to do. So we're gonna run this to the branch because the branch is going to, this output will be for the, fo the fourth turret and this will be for the other three turrets. So we're gonna run the branch out uh, to the splitter here. And then I'm going to set this branch to 10, 20, 31 for those, for those three um, turrets. And then what's left will automatically, because if I set this to the correct output, um, I've got uh, four turrets and three switches. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, and 43 for that switch down there. So if I set this to 43, now I will have, if I turn the switch on down here, I will have 
10 coming out of here and then 10 coming out of each of these. It might not show it, but there is 10 coming out of those because um, there's 31 coming out of here. Sometimes they glitch out and they don't want to show you until they're hooked up. So uh, now we just got to run these to our turrets. So there's a turret on each side of the base. So what I'm going to do is just sort of arbitrarily pick one and I'm going to go run this say up to here and I'll just go outside to that side and figure out a way to run that line. So, you know, the trick to running lines honestly is to just kind of think about your, your base in 3d space and see if you can find a way outside. I mean, you don't lines don't do anything. They can be run all over the place. Um, I just, really like things to you know be be run nicely so uh, i'm going to run this to this foot and then i usually go under it and up to it and so that should turn on perfect and it should say see right now it's getting it's getting 30 because there's nothing else hooked up but as soon as i hook up the other two this is going to drop to 20 when i hook up one more and then 10 when i hook up the third one so we've got that one hooked up and so uh, you know, I often don't necessarily know exactly where my turrets are in relation to the base, but what I do is I just don't go out the same corner each time and you'll by default figure out a way to get there. So I'll take this next one and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to run it all the way around, uh, here and over to here. And then I'm going to run this out this corner over here. And that should be another turret outside that looks good so we're gonna run this one outside so a lot of this uh you know when you're trying to like think about your base and think about you know how you're gonna wire things um it, you know if you understand how to wire the base or you know how to set up the circuits um it's a lot easier because you know then you're just worried about you know trying to find the right you know exit for the wire and stuff um so you know, with practice, it takes a little time, but once you get the, in the hang of it, it um, it gets easier. And so here's one more, and this one should now say 15 because it's split 30 between two now. And so, yeah, actually this will be 15. So then the, now when I hook up the third one, which will be over there, um, that one will have um, 10 to it. So, because what the splitter does, is it takes whatever you send to it and it cuts it up evenly based on however many outputs you have. So if you, have two outputs it'll cut in two if you have three it'll cut in three so um, this next one here i'm going to change the direction a bit because that other turret is on the other side whoops is on the other side so we're going to run that this way i like to run through doors because it's a really great way to hide line and then i'm going to run that line through this door frame if i can get it to clip right let's see if maybe it's not quite back there there we go and I'll run that over to this corner. And then this one is gonna run outside to that other one. So it should be out the front door to the right. And so let's see. So again, this is like, I mean, you know, I think the wiring part is the most tedious part, but if you understand, yeah, there it is, perfect. Uh, so if you understand how to make the, the circuits, um, this part becomes just more of the design and look. So now we should have 10 here. Perfect, so now that means the other three have 10. So now we have this final turret at the front door here, and we're going to run that from the power out of that uh, branch that we used to make four outputs off of one switch. Um, again, that's part of the Wire Like a Pro video, so if that's something you're interested in learning, you can go see it there. So I'm gonna run from the power out. I got 10 left, that's exactly what I want. I'm gonna run that uh, actually this same direction. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it up here this time. I'll go around these shotgun traps and place it there, okay. And then that's gonna go to the last turret. And that will be it. Okay, so let's run this out. And so now, you know, that's right down here. That's kind of why I did that. And so I can run that um, either, you know, in here, I'll often just pop it up to the ceiling like this, follow the lines on the walls is a good way to, to run lines. Um, actually, that's a terrible idea. Let's run that down here. Actually, no, that's good. So like, I, you know, I, I personally don't really like running wires on the floor. Um, I like to go over just so that when raiders are coming through, they're not paying attention to that. Um, if you really, if you want little tricks, you can come down here like this. We have plenty of line, right? We can come down here like this. You can hide it inside there 
and then come back up under the turret and it just looks nice and wireless. There you go. So you can't even see where it came from. So that's a little trick. So there we go, we got four turrets. They all have the right voltage and they're set up on a smart switch down there in the TC room. And so remember that because of the way these are run, these are all independent of each other. So if one turret is destroyed or one battery is destroyed, all this keeps on running. So that is turrets. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is one of my absolute favorite things to do. I do this so often in my bases and I cannot tell you how often this has worked out amazingly for me. So I like to build a sort of the, the classic trap base, but I like to integrate that trap base into my base. And so what I do is I hook up uh, door controllers to this door, these two doors, this one, and this door. And um, so we'll just go ahead and start and you'll kind of see the evolution. But the point is, is the, uh, the Raider, you know, it's based on door Raiders, um, but since I would say nine out of 10 people door raid, um, they pass through here and you know, I'll, I'll show you what happens. Uh, so we're gonna start with the components. So I'm gonna hook up door controllers um, to the doors in question. Now I want these door controllers to be hidden. So what I like to do is uh, come at them from this, at the, you know, I place these doors this direction, partly just because it looks nice, but also because it helps me hide these. So uh, I'm gonna place this one in here. Well, if I can get it in there, let's see. You'll see, it'll, it'll turn green here in a second. Let's see. Uh, where to go? No, you can't. You can't put it on the actual door, but you can put it on the frame of this door up here. There we go. There we go. Right there. Perfect. Okay. And so then I'm gonna unlock this door, and the easiest way to know if they pair is if it shuts the door. It does. And so we are good. So I'm gonna lock this door. The whole reason you have to unlock a door to pair it is so that you have other doors in proximity. A door controller only only uh it'll only pair to an unlocked door so you can isolate other doors so now you've got this other door over here um, i got to figure out a good spot sometimes you know you kind of have to play with these and figure out where's the best spot that actually let's see can i put that there oh i totally can um, so then i need to unlock this door let's see if we can see if that works so that that one is not going to work Okay, so we gotta figure out a better spot for that. So probably just in here, but up high if possible. Let's see if we can do it up there. Let's see. You know, this is always the fun part is finding a spot. There we go. It was just how I was on there and perfect. Okay, so then that's gonna pair perfectly because you want these to be sem semi-hidden because they have lights on them and you know they can see stuff. So uh, if any of you have dealt with door controllers before and you've tried to pair them to things, you know the pain that is trying to get these things to pair. This one's really easy because uh, we're gonna hook this up to this door, but I can just put this up in here and no one can see that. Uh, so there we go. That's door controller number three. And then door controller number four is gonna go in here. Now this is like, you have to plan for this. Um, because I would want to use the bunker door. You know, you break those stairs, you put a bunker in there. You know, I plan for this to be here. So um, I think I might have broken one of my door controllers. Let me replace that. There we go. Um, so I'm going to set this one up here somewhere in this little area here. Let me unlock this uh, door and it should pair right up. There we go. So these are all paired now. Um, that was the the first step. So the next step is we're going to set up the actual um, trap circuit itself. Uh, I, I'm probably going to do a video on this one of these days. So uh, if you're not sure what this is or how to do this, um, no worries. It'll happen. Uh, so now, uh, oops, there's one thing I forgot to put up there. There's a laser. So I'm going to use the laser. Um, some people don't like the laser. And, you know, honestly, I've just never had anything but the greatest luck with the laser. So. Uh, I'm gonna use the laser and I'm gonna hide it with a um, with a furnace. Um, it works really, really well. So you can just set the laser up somewhere around here like that. Um, there, so now we've got all our components up there minus the shotgun traps, obviously. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm gonna need power to the laser and I'm gonna need power to the, uh, to the, uh, the memory cell 
And I'm also gonna need power to the switch actually. So uh, I think I'm gonna need a third branch actually. So I'm gonna put a branch there, a branch there. And I believe I'm gonna need another branch. This is kind of the fun of wiring. You know, you sort of have to wing some of this stuff as you do it. So I'm gonna put it one there. And then of course the memory cell, which is going to be what um, works the trap itself. And so I'm going to place another smart switch down here. Of course, you can do these with regular switches. It's just that smart switches are nice uh, because they are, um, you can rest plus them. And so I'm gonna use a, uh, another splitter and this splitter is gonna be for three of the, three of the door controllers up there. It's just an easy way to run them. Uh, I don't think there's any room in here. Oh, I could do it in here. Let's do it right here. So we're gonna place this here and I'm gonna start by just go ahead and just run these. Um, I need to run, we'll do this in black. I need to run three lines to three of the doors. Uh, you know, I often refer to the, uh, the door that has the shotgun traps in it. I often refer to that as the kill door and the other doors, it's just the regular door. So I'm gonna run these to one of each of those um, door controllers. Now you'll notice that I'm running a splitter and I'm not daisy chaining these door controllers. I'm doing that on purpose. And I'm doing that because I don't want, if someone breaks in and they blow up a door, I don't want that door to then uh, take out, if they, you know, if this was daisy chained to the next one and someone, this broke for some reason, that one was not working. So what I prefer to do is run three independent lines when it comes to things like this. Um, you know, that's personal choice. I just like to, it's just safer if um, you do it this way. So I'm gonna run, these three lines up into the bedroom, I guess, maybe. Uh, and so this one's gonna go to that one right there. So I'll just follow this same path that I was taking. Uh, let's see if I can get, I might have to get up in there. Let's take the same path. You can see that a lot of rust wiring is just playing around until it works. So here we got, uh, oh, that's right, it's over here. Let's see, I'm gonna run this over to there. And then what I'll probably do to try and hide it is I, I don't want to connect it to this one, but I'd like to run it through here so that they don't see it um, coming up to that. So there we go. And then the next thing I'm going to do, oh, we got one more, I think. Let's see. Yeah, we got one more. So we're going to run this last one here. Uh, let's see. If you guys can't tell, I spend most of my time early wipe doing early day doing this when my, my teammates go out and get the goods. Okay. So I'm gonna run this to the last one. These are all going to the garage doors is the point. And the reason is the garage doors are what are gonna catch the people uh, and this is what's gonna kill them. So I'm going to run this last one to the uh, final one over there. And I'm actually just gonna follow the same route because I wanna hide this as best I can because the least amount that the Raiders see the better. So I'm gonna run this behind there and then I'm going to run it right over to here, but I'm probably gonna see if I can, it won't be the best hide, but it'll be better than nothing. So you and if you move it around, you'll see that it right there. So that's actually pretty good because when you're coming in, you won't necessarily see that and who knows what that is. All right, so we've got our three uh, door controllers hooked up there. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is I'm going to run, so, so the, we're gonna run power actually so we can get this memory cell going. Um, so this is our current uh, power out. So I'm gonna just daisy chain that to the next one. So I'm gonna run power to this one here, like so. Um, and so we might as well just run this to the switch because we do need one for a switch. So we're actually gonna leave this as two uh, because the um, switch is what you're gonna use to reset the, um, the trap. Um, the way I set this up, you have to, you have to to manually reset the trap. Um, but, and I think that's the best way, you know, you can get, I've done this where I set this up on a, on a, you know, what is it, the broadcaster thing or whatever. Um, so this is gonna run to the reset on our memory cell because that's how you're gonna set the trap again after it goes off. Um, so that's, that's that. And then this, you're gonna go ahead and daisy chain. Wow, I keep doing that. Uh, you're gonna daisy chain again and we're going to hook up this next branch here. And this one is going to power the laser. Um, so you could obviously use like this and a splitter and then 
you know, you'll save a volt and you could power the laser and that at the same time. Um, but the splitters are just ginormous. And so I tend not to do that because I just want the room for other stuff. So I've got this empty branch here. I'm gonna run this in black to hide it. And we're gonna run that actually just kind of around the loop. You can see how stuff starts to build up. Um, we're gonna run this the same way we ran these other ones because that laser is down there and I'm gonna run it, I'm gonna hide it um, all the way in to that, the kill door there. So here we go, I'm gonna run this trap that I've made. This trap that I've made um, has netted me so many great things because think about it, you door raid someone, you get in a couple of doors and then this happens. Uh, you usually have a lot of material with you to go farther into the base, you know? And what a bummer if you get locked in with all of it and are killed. So I'm gonna run this across here and then down to this, the, the where's the laser? Right about there. So I'm gonna run it down to here, like so, and then I'm gonna power this laser with it. Boom, there you go. And so we'll hide that obviously, cause that's a problem. Um, and then the laser, so I ran two volts to it on purpose because, um, I need one volt to go back to the set input on the um, on the memory cell. So I'm going to just retrace my steps with the output of the laser. We're gonna take it back all the way over to here, like so. There we go. And we're gonna run that to the set input because that's going to set the uh, memory cell to state zero, which is what we want, or state one, excuse me, which is what we want. And so that's how the trap works. And I'll make sure we run that corner, come around here. And there we go. We're gonna run this to the set input, um, just like that. So the laser is now on the set. So so once the, you know, now we've now we have to figure out, well, what are the doors supposed to be? So currently, it's default setting, so we have to, let's see, let's daisy chain into that. So we're gonna run uh, out from here into this next one, because now we've powered our laser, we've powered the uh, switch, we've powered everything we need. And now we're going to run the branch out um, here to the memory cell. And so that is gonna be the actual um, power to the power of this. And this is where you have to decide, well, how many, how many volts do I need coming out of here? Um, and so you have to base this volt out of here based on the maximum amount you'll ever need. And so that's gonna be uh, one, two, three, four. So we're gonna set this to four because you don't have to consider the memory cell because it is free. It says it's, it's gonna say it took it, but it didn't. And so it's default setting right now is here in the inverted outputs where it starts. And so that's gonna be powered. So you're gonna want that to be the doors that are open. And so we're gonna run this to the uh, input on our on our switch there. So I guess maybe the best way is to come down here and we'll try and try and keep it looking good. There we go. And then this last one here is gonna go to the um, to the kill door or the you know the door with the traps behind it. Because once the once you trigger the laser, the laser is going to um, switch the memory cell into state one, and then that's going to, uh, is gonna, is gonna get you. So let's go ahead and, well, no, let's not do that. Actually, this is probably a terrible way to run this. I should just run this the normal way. So that, cause again, when you're doing this, you gotta think about, I mean, you know, I have a hard time believing Raiders are gonna like, you know, enter and go, oh, that right there, that's a trap wire. If I ever saw one, you know, probably not. But, but you never know. And so I like to, I try to, I try to think about all contingencies when I'm wiring these things. So we're gonna run this the exact same way we ran the other one because that actually makes a heck of a lot more sense. And we'll put it in here where they'll never see um, cause they'll never get this far, probably. Obviously nothing's perfect. There's ways around this. You know, I'm probably shooting myself in the foot showing you guys this, but Hey man, it's fun. So we're gonna run this, this time we are gonna run this into here and into this right here. And so now um, if someone passes across this laser, those three doors shut and that opens. And so they get shot right here and uh, 
you, they get locked in, and so you can just collect their stuff at your leisure. And they get stuck between, you know, two doors. And the cool thing about this is you can open this, and once you open everything again, if you want to run it in and out of here, it's not going to go off on you unless the trap is actually set. So you can you can trigger the trap yourself because lasers don't care about off, and uh, and then you can run it out without any problems. And then when you're done, you can set it, and I'll show you how to set it here in a second. But um, then you just take the the uh, uh, you're gonna take this and you're gonna and what you want to do is find the right spot where it's not perfect there you go look at that you cannot see that and so what I do is I set the trap and I leave these open because I mean how many times you walk you raid someone's base you're like ha, 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 you left your doors open huh great job you know um, and so let's say so let's see these are open let's go ahead and set our um, our shotgun traps and so what I usually do is do I mean really one trap is fine I like to set three in case they're running, uh, in case they run in fast. Um, I like to have a little bit of a spread. And so then just load them up and you are good to go. And that's it. And so then to set this trap, um, you would, so right now that door is open, for instance, when you set the trap, the cool thing is, is that you just toggle this once and turn it off. And now you can see that went back to state, state zero. It's, it's green and red again. Um, and so now the trap is set again and it's ready to go. So you would do that before you logged out or you would leave the base and use Rust Plus to do that while you're out running around. Um, and so now it's set. And so if someone were to walk across this, those open, all three of these doors shut, it locks them in. This door is unaffected, so it'd be closed. And so they die right here and you can come and collect their stuff. Um, so if you reset the trap without closing those doors, uh, or whatever, or without manipulating any of those doors, it's going to open the um, the three doors that trap you in, and it's going to close that one and reset the trap. So yeah, that's uh, one of my absolute favorite things, and I put that in every base if I can. It has a small footprint, and it has a big effect. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to do is put uh, auto doors on my turrets, um, HBH depth sensor auto doors. I don't always actually do this, um, but I just thought it might be useful for this video because I think a lot of people like this. Um, so I'm going to, I've already paired up um, door controllers to these doors um, on each of them just for time and one is daisy chained to the other. And so let's start in the TC room like I normally do. Um, and I'm going to set up the electronics in there and then we'll wire everything up. So uh, right off the bat, first thing we're gonna need to do, of course, is extend our power. So I'm gonna put a new branch in order to do that. So this is our last one there. So we have 35 volts. Um, it would be perfectly acceptable for you to want to just add a turret in here. Um, but I think this might be, you know, this is a little more difficult to do, so it might be instructive for this video. Um, so I need to set up uh, four AND switches, one for each door. Um, it's important when you're doing this that you set these high enough that they won't impact your boxes um, because these will stop you from placing boxes. So you want to keep them kind of high on the wall. Same thing with these things. Um, and then let's see, we're going to need a couple of, uh, couple of splitters for power. There we go. And then we're going to need a branch. We'll start with this one here. This is going to be that if you've, you know, watch my wire like a pro, this is how I'm going to make four outputs here. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to just wire, I need power. I need two volts to each of these. So I'm going to run um, power from one of these splitters here. Let's just use, let's use yellow for fun. So I'm going to run power to one of each of these splitters here and, um, or out of the splitter to each of these and switches, excuse me. And then we're going to, uh, let's see. So this, this is going to, well, this is an interesting wire run. Uh, and then I need a fourth, right? So these only have three. So I'm gonna use this splitter to make this an output of four. So I'm gonna connect the uh, branch out to the input of that, of that splitter that I'm running out of currently, right there. And then I'm gonna run the power out of here over to the, the splitter or the and switch, excuse me, that I have yet to um, run. I guess I could, well, let's use it black, it doesn't matter. Just cut it down through here, run it up here following this weird pattern I'm doing. There we go. 
So now we have four outputs um, and all you have to do is, so for this, we have, you know, three of these off of this. So this is two, four, six, seven. So we're gonna set this to seven. And then I'm going to uh, set, I'm gonna connect this here to the output of this branch out so that I can run power to the whole thing, which will give me power to all of my um, and switches. So then if I set this to, I believe 10, because we need to account for the splitter or the branch, which excuse me, the, the splitter itself. So we need two, four, six, eight, nine, and 10. And so now each of these should be receiving two. Yep. So now we have enough to power our two door controllers. Um, so we're gonna run, let's go ahead and just run these lines outside. So we're gonna start, it's very important when you're doing this, that the and switch that you're you hooking up is a tied to the correct door and the HBH step sensor that runs to this input is also on that, that same door. So the way you're gonna wanna do that is the front door is, I, I say the front door um, turret is turret one. So it'll be one, then I'll go to the right, that'll be two, three, and four, always going to the right. So you can keep track. So I'm gonna start with one and I'm going to run that uh, to the turret out the front door using just the standard way I've been doing this. There we go. And uh, yeah, so as long as we keep track of that, it's gonna be really, really simple. So you just hook each one of these to each door uh, in the right order. And then you have to hook up an HVHF sensor, which we're gonna have to power, which is that other splitter, we'll get to that. Um, so if you just pick a spot here, I'll just jumper it out. You know, we could even do something here. We bring it in here. This will be a little cleaner. Bring it across here, maybe. Yeah, we'll go through there. And then let's see, is this the one? Yeah, power in, perfect. So this one's daisy chained off of this first one. So now we're set, there we go. So that's number one. Now we're gonna go and hit up number two and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Only we're gonna go out a different corner like I've been doing. Um, so number two is gonna start here. And this one is gonna be the one that runs out that far corner. So I'm just gonna run that up there, fix it. Cause I see seem to be, there we go, perfect. And then right there so now we're going to go outside and go to the right and that's going to be um, this, the doors or the set of turrets number two and that way we can keep track of everything and not hook up our hbhf sensors to the wrong door because if you mess this up what happens is, is somebody gets detected and they're on this side of the base but it opens up doors on the opposite side of the base which you don't want so we went to the right one and i'm just going to run this up here into this corner and it looks like it's this door controller over here. I must have done that, there we go. So now we're hooked into these door controllers for number two. So let's run in and do number three. Okay, so number three, we're going to just continue the same way we've been doing this. And we'll just, I mean, hey, why not? We'll just go through here. We'll run this over to here. We just need to go out this corner is the point. Okay, and then we're gonna run outside. So this was, that was one, this is two, and this would be three. And it should be right, yep, there it is, coming out of the right spot. So there we go. We'll hook this up, up here, looks like. I did that one this time. There we go. So those are daisy chained in. So now we all we have left is four. So let's go inside. Okay, so now we're gonna do the last one. The last one's gonna be out this corner behind me. So actually we'll just bring it around this backside out there. And there we go. All right, so now all of the door controller setups have power. And so the next thing we have to do is we have to hook up our HBHF sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these up while I'm out here. Um, and what you wanna do actually is, this is great. Um, sheet metal has all these overhangs and stuff and you can put these down here, hidden out of view. And as long as you can access the power, which you can, 
this is a great way to do it because people can't, you know, you have to get right up on the base to find these and most people aren't gonna find these that easily. So just do that, check them. Yep, we're good. I think this one's a little lower, this foundation, so I have to be a little more clever. So sometimes you gotta find the right spot. Let's see if it'll fit right in there. Uh, how about, there we go, that's nice. You can see it, but it's not obvious is the point. You want it to be, it's better to have these low, especially if you have walls. This is actually really great because the turret doors don't open until someone jumps in. And so if they're snooping around, they're not gonna, they're, they're gonna, it'll be too late when they jump the wall uh, when these open. So this is kind of a great way, perfect. Okay, so we have all those set up. So now we have to go set up the power for those. Um, it's gonna be very similar to how we did the power to the um, to the AND switches. So I'm going to set up another branch because I need four outputs, right? And I'm going to, actually, I need one more branch because I want to keep these separate. So I'm gonna hook up another chain here and there we go. And I'm gonna daisy chain this off this to here, just like this, so now we're set. And I'm gonna put this branch is going to, the branch out here is gonna run to this other branch that we just set up. Um, I'll just follow the same little path I've been doing. You know, I try and make things as neat as I can. Once you start getting a lot of stuff in here, I mean, this gets pretty, pretty wild, so. Um, okay, so then this branch output here is gonna go to the um, input of our other splitter that I set up over here, right there. And then this, you know, it's gonna be the same situation. So now I'm gonna run the um, lines for these, and I'm gonna run these. So e each of these lines is gonna run, actually we should do this in black because we're gonna go outside. So I'm gonna run each of these lines plus this power out to each of the HPHF sensors. So I'm just going to, now again, we have to be very, very careful when we come back. So right now powering them, it doesn't matter which one you use, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go one to four like I've been doing just because it's easier. But um, powering the HPHF sensor, doesn't matter what order or which one's hooked up to what, it's when you have the return line from the HPHF sensor that matters. So I'm gonna run out, take this first one, I'm just gonna go to number one because that's what we've been doing. Uh, but uh, again, this this routing is irrelevant. You just need, you need to send two volts to each one because you need one to power it. And this is the great thing because it comes from that corner. You can just run down here and tack it in here and then find the power in and it's completely hidden, which is ideal. And, and so right now it's not gonna be on because um, we don't have it set up. So if you wanna save time, you can actually go in reverse order since we're already out here. So I can just hook up to this power in here, tack it. And I know what corner this is in because I've been you know, doing this will be the, the second corner, right? So I've got this, I'm just gonna reverse engineer this, uh, which is just save us a little bit of time. And so you can, this is a great way to do it because you know, if you're doing this real time on a server, you wanna do as best you can. So this is where I would have gone, would have been somewhere over here. And so I'm just gonna go backwards and then we're gonna hook that to um, the other, one of the other splitters or the splitter outputs. So I'm just gonna run it up here, jump for that through here, I guess, and uh, go over here, drop it down and there you go. Now we've hooked up another one and now we can hook up a third one which will be the, the, it'll be the third turret just for continuity's sake. And that will be over here. And then when we're out there, we can grab the fourth one and bring it back in, which will save us more time. That is awful. There we go. If you right click, you can unhook the wire. It's a nice tip. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna head outside and I'm going to hook up this third one. Um, and then I'll reverse engineer the fourth one back in, save us some time. So I don't always do that with tutorials just so people can really see what I'm doing, but I think you guys totally get the idea here. So I'm gonna just tack this down here, somewhere inside, and then hook up the power, there we go. And let's reverse this third one, this one will this one will end up going, or fourth one, excuse me, this will go right into the uh, TC room. So we can just jump for that right inside. And then we will have only four more lines to hook up and then it is done. It's exciting. I know this is a lot. Um, I actually do most of this because um, I love this stuff. Okay, so we're gonna just jumper this in here and then I'm gonna run this into this little bundle of wires I got going on down here. Oh, I'm wrong. 
So this is the fourth one, right? So we actually don't have anywhere for the splitter to um, grab it. So if you right, right, there it goes. Um, so if you tap the right, it doesn't always work, but eventually you'll get it to unhook. Okay, so what I want, I want to run this to the power out because that's my, that's my modded four output switch, right? Okay, so now we have this. It's the same setup as this. It's, you know, it's not and switches, it's the HBHF, but they need two volts too. So you're just gonna set this to seven because you have four of those plus the splitter. Uh, and then you're gonna set this to 10 because you need to power this branch and those. And you'll see that it says two. And this says two, two, and two. Perfect. Now, that, the last thing we have to do is actually hook up those HBH set sensors, HBHF sensors uh, to our AND switches. So this is where it gets important. So this is switch one. This is like the front door turret. This is the one to the right, the three, and then four. So you have to follow this very, very carefully or you will have things opening that you don't want opening. So I'm just gonna run that through there, I guess. Why not? And then let's just go the standard way and we will get this. That's not right. There we go. Um, so obviously they can hear HBHF sensors, but they won't hear it or locate it before it already opens the turret. So most of the time, I don't think players notice them when they're this close to the base because the door is open and they're so loud that it's obvious. So now once again, you can just clip it down here and it says exclude authorized. Notice that. So it's actually gonna, it's gonna have those open. Um, it'll, it'll keep them open. Let's see, so I'll tack that and then power out. There we go. So now we have exactly that. And now watch this, if I if I get out of a range of it, if they can't see me, they close. If I get down in front of it, they open. That's exactly what we want. And they're gonna close again when, I'm, when I come around this corner. So I'm gonna hook up the power out of this one. We're gonna go ahead and continue reverse engineering. So this is number two, I went out to the right, right? And let's see, I'm gonna tack it so it's in there somewhere, okay? Let's go inside. It also conveniently opens it for me right now, I guess. Um, we would change this, obviously, to um, include authorized so that they don't open when you're running around. Uh, but so this is number two, and so number two comes up, reverse engineering into this corner. This is how I do it. Uh, there we go. And then, again, the door hides all your horrible wiring that no one can see anyway, so that's cool. Now this one has to go to the second one. Remember that it must go to and switch number two because otherwise you are gonna open up the wrong doors. And this one must go to and switch, or this number three must go to the third one out there. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this, I'm gonna run this up here and out this corner. Let's go outside. Okay, so here we are coming up our third one. So it should match up to that corner. There we go, that's what we want. So we're going to set this to somewhere in here. Can we get it to hide the wire? There we go. And we'll say power out. And so if I close one of these, it should open it right back up. Let's see, it didn't, why is that? Well, we'll handle that in a moment. All right, so the last one here is, there it goes. Okay, the last one here is, I'm going to hook up to the power out. We're gonna reverse engineer this one and run inside. Now, of course, this one is gonna to run to the, uh, to the um, output on our, oh no, I'm not, what am I doing? <laughs> it's gonna run over to here. I'm getting way behind, we already did this. Okay, so we're gonna run this over to the last one here. And there you go, and it's hooked up. Um, that is how you do this. We can go outside and run around the base and you'll see that the door is open and follow me. This is exactly what we want to happen. Uh, and then we can set the, the HBH step sensors to include me so that they don't actually open when I'm running around because we don't, we don't want that. So I will close this. And you'll notice as soon as I get down here, this one opens because I've been detected. This one opens because I've been detected. There we go. That one works. 
this one works. And I forgot to close these. But there we go. So it should, if I get far enough away, there it goes. And so that's kind of the point. You get somebody, you know, that's far enough away. They can't see those. You can't see those. They come running up on your base to check it out. And toast. That's what we want. So then what you want to do is just tap this until it says include authorized. And you can check this too. If you tap it and it says include authorized and hold it, it'll say include authorized. Um, oh, you want? You don't want to do that. You want to exclude others. <laughs> so don't just tap it. That was wrong. So we're going to hold it and we're going to, oh, I, I like to just tap it so it says what I want and then I'll swap the other one. So now it should, it should say include authorized, exclude others. That's exactly what we want. Perfect. And so once you have it set correctly, let me just tap these. I think this really confuses people. Um, there we go. And I think one more maybe, did I get this one? All right, I got that one. Okay, so now with it set correctly, they should leave me alone. And that is not this one. Let's see, oh, there we go. Include authorized. Exclude others. There we go. Now it works. Okay. And so what you can do is, of course, you can just use this door, um, and it will it will actually cycle closed if somebody comes by. Um, but you can use it as a normal door. Keep all these open if you want. I mean, whatever. That's your choice. Um, okay. That is auto turret doors. And I think the next thing we're gonna do is just one final thing, guys. It's gonna be. Oh, you got upgraded wind turbines let's do it all right well the very last thing we're going to do is a little bonus upgrade to wind power i figured this might be something people would be interested in so you know you've got this solar power and you know when i was hooking this all up i set it to 150 if you recall and I, you know that was fine but it took it a while to, to 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 really charge up that first battery so i ended up you know pumping it up a little bit so what happens if you get some some uh some wind turbines and you want to upgrade uh, well the easiest way to do that and the way i do this is i just remove two solar panels and I replace them with a wind turbine because the wind turbine is 24 7. Um, and so you know keep in mind that i am uh, right by the the water and so the wind power over here is really good so i'm not really gonna have to do much in terms of height of the turbine of the wind turbines you know, if you're inland more, you really got to pop these things up if you want to have uh, consistently higher power. Um, it doesn't mean they won't supply you with good power. It's just that it's going to be uh, lower more often, I guess you could say. So, you know, over here by the coast, you know, we we have that sweet, sweet wind power. So I'm going to go ahead and just upgrade this system with two turbines to show you guys how I would do this uh, in in game. So all I do is I make these little these little jump ups here. And then I, I put two half walls here um, so that I can come at this. Uh, so that, I mean, depending on how high this is, it'll change for you, but you really wanna just come at it from the center if you can. And then that way you can easily center it onto your platform, which lets you put, um, well, that's terrible. I want the opening toward me. There we go, that's better. So be careful, that's actually a good lesson. If you want that opening toward you, you can't destroy it like I can. So think about that. Um, so yeah, rotate it for the, for, to the, so that it's toward you because that's where the electrical connection is. So, um, there we go. So we have our two, our two wind powers and then what I'll, what I would do is I would, um, take, I would, you know, I would delete or delete. I, sh I would pick up the two solar panels that are closest to the outside that are most likely to get shaded, um, by these. And by delete, by taking those out, you know, now there's two root combiner inputs that are open down there. And so all you have to do is just hook each turbine into one of those um, spots. And so I'll do that. The, our wire drop down was over there, if you'll recall from earlier. And I'm just gonna sort of put this down over there, it looks like, come on, where is it? Right there. And then I'll drop this down on the inside just to kind of make it look nice and pop it right over to here and there you go and then i can just run right inside and so i'm going to hook this into either of the available root combiners and what this is going to do is going to upgrade our power immensely and it's going to allow us to uh you know have more consistent power more often and it'll allow us to increase the voltage of our our batteries in fact i mean this really is probably enough that you could even add a whole nother battery if you wanted you'll notice that some of these root combiners are off um, 
there we go because they're being shaded so this is how you would tell you would you could unhook these lines for these these ones that are off because the 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 wind turbines are clearly shading i'm not going to do that but this would be how you would figure out which ones were problematic so i'm going to actually i probably have to run up there and do this the reverse because i think i have half walls at my little at my little jump up thing i made um so but all you have to do is put your wind turbines up and replace two of the um you know take uh, remove two of your solar panels and there you go yeah i knew it um there we go so we will hook this one up now you can see let's see what are we at it's you know i have a i have a always daylight for this tutorial but 110 we're probably in the middle of the you know midday sometime uh and that's great man 110 constantly uh and that's gonna fluctuate you know windmills can go any technically they can go from zero to 150. um they very rarely go to zero i don't know if i've actually ever seen one go to zero um but but they are more consistent than solar panels they're also way more obvious you know if you're looking to be inconspicuous you don't want giant windmills on top of your base but here we are upgrading our system i'm going to put this in here and then where's our last there it is that's there right there so we're just going to come over to our little cable run here and there you go so now you know even with these dead we have two dead we actually have four dead oh you know what's probably my jump up thing is probably covering it uh, but even with those covered we have 260 coming out now which is much more than we had before and if you remember this was our original you know uh split off the two and and what i ended up doing later was i i upped this to 200 because the primary battery was taking a long time to charge um and so you can do that you can sort of pump this up to 200 to get your primary battery going and then that way because your secondary battery is not as important right off the bat that's the most important one so let that charge and then you can switch this a bit so that you have more coming out here but with these wind turbines now we've got you know 200 flat coming out of here to our primary and our secondary is getting 72 so really you can play with this power between this battery backup slash you know redundant battery system uh, which is pretty cool so i'm just going to run upstairs to the roof and see if maybe those two solar panels are actually okay i think it's probably just my little my little jump up thing i made is probably blocking them and if that's the case then we can leave all of them up there uh, but you know you can see with power you have options i mean with at this point with the amount of power that i've hooked up on here uh, we probably have enough to add another battery i'm not gonna do that for this video um, but you know you you might actually be able to to do that so you know sky's the limit how you do this is up to you um i like to have redundant battery systems so that if one's destroyed or if if uh if uh you know so they just destroy my inputs up there and you know and that's a good point to, to 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 think about is that having two windmills and solar panels is great because you know if someone's firing rockets at things they destroy some you still have something going on so it looks like we have one dead one and so what you would do there is you, know, you got zero coming out of that some coming out of uh, there's the solar panels so these two are dead right here. And so what you would do is just unhook these lines, go up there and see which ones are unhooked. And then you could remove or move them to a spot that works. But even then, we're, we got 263 coming in. That's awesome. You know, we got 200 going to our primary. You know, you only need 125 technically. Um, but 200 going there and another 58 to our to our battery backup. And if you go to our, our batteries here, you'll see that this thing is quickly going back up to full power which is what we want you know we want this to be at full power so that it only really kicks in the, the, the goal of having you know that much voltage coming in is that this battery remains fully charged all the time basically unless the you lose your root power in, power inputs uh, and that's that's the you know the new rust batteries since they updated these whenever that was they you know you you keep it fully charged all the time until these die or it gets you know dark for a minute but with windmills you're not even going to lose power when it gets dark so anyway that is the windmill upgrade and uh next is the base tour